Hello everyone. Uh, the title I've been given uh, for today's talk is Greater Than David. We're going to consider a few verses from the Old Testament that are the most quoted or alluded to in the New Testament. And they're found in Psalm 110, a psalm written by King David. Verse 1, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. And verse 4, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. What is it about these verses that is so important that they are quoted or referred to so often? Messiah was going to be descended from David in his humanity, but this verse shows he is also divine, sitting at God's right hand. So it speaks of the incarnation. That first word, Lord, is in capital letters. And in the Old Testament, that always refers to Yahweh. So we know that David is speaking of God, the Lord, God saying to my Lord, sit at my right hand. So who is equal to God that he should be invited to sit down at his right hand? Well, obviously, great as David was, he refers not to himself, but to Messiah. The Messiah is going to be greater than David because he is divine. But perhaps we should start by asking, in what ways was David great? He was a great leader, a warrior king who expanded Israel's borders and brought peace. A man of courage, a giant killer. Jesus is referred to in Revelation 19 as the King of Kings, appearing on a white horse and leading the armies of heaven. We're not told how many armies, but a safe pep would be many, many more than the mightiest earthly kings. Jesus is the greatest of all kings. But although David was great in many ways, he was also flawed. He raped Bathsheba. He arranged for Uriah, her husband, to be murdered. He had a dysfunctional family life and he at one point proudly ordered a countrywide census. Yet despite his many failings, he was a man of mercy. He could have killed Saul, his enemy, on at least two occasions, but chose mercy. He showed kindness to Mephibosheth when other kings would kill the descendants of a previous ruler. He forgave Shimei who cursed him and he was repentant of his failings when they were pointed out to him and asked God for forgiveness. And so we read in Acts 13, 22, David described as a man after God's own heart because he hated sin and yet was gracious to forgive the sin in others. Well, who does that remind you of? Of course, unlike King David, Jesus never sinned. Jesus asked the Pharisees a question, which of you convicts me of sin? As someone observed, it was not their failure to answer his question that was so significant but the fact he dared to ask it at all. It was absolutely necessary for him to be without sin, to be the spotless substitutionary sacrifice for us. Jesus loved righteousness and hated lawlessness, but loved mercy. And on the cross he cried, Father, forgive them. They know not what they're doing sinless but merciful to sinners. He is greater than David because he sits down at God's right hand and that puts Jesus in a different league completely. It is saying he is equal with God. David and all of us would fall down before God. We wouldn't sit down in his presence. So Jesus is greater than David in his kingship, 
but he's also greater than David because he is a priest. Now, David occasionally carried out some priestly functions like leading the worship, but Jesus is greater because his priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek? Who was Melchizedek? Well, he is a figure from the Old Testament shrouded in mystery. His name means righteousness and he was king of Salem, which means peace. So he is both king of righteousness and king of peace. And he was a priest of God Most High. He is someone who resembles Christ and points us towards him. He only has one appearance and it's in Genesis 14 and then he disappears. And this enigmatic puzzling, you know, where did he come from? Where did he go to? Is perhaps why he's described in Hebrews 7.3 as being without father or mother or genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. Therefore, because Jesus' priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek, he, Jesus, is a priest forever, but by the power of an indestructible life. Jesus holds his priesthood permanently. So what does that mean for us? Well, Hebrews 7 and verse 25 tells us, consequently, he is able for all time to save those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Jesus is praying for you. And no prayer of Jesus goes unanswered. In Genesis 14, Abraham returns victorious from a battle against five kings and Melchizedek suddenly appears, seemingly out of nowhere, and greets him and offers him bread and wine. Who does that remind you of? God says to his son, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies a stool for your feet. It was the role of the servant to bring the footstool. And God the Father serves God the Son, who serves us. Jesus was, sorry, Jesus says, for the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. God the Father serves God the Son, who serves us with bread and wine. That speak of his body and his blood. As we look forward to Christmas, let us give thanks for our servant King, who came to ransom us from our sins, and whoever lives to intercede for us. Amen.